Uh, we have a very special guest today for Hot Topics. You can see the mayor of Oakland, Libby Schaff, is here. Congratulations on winning your second term as mayor. Thank you. It's great to be here, even though it is a little rainy out there. All right, We're yes. <laughs> We're glad you made it in. Uh, Reggie and I have a pressing question for you. We and do. it's, of course, about the Raiders. We saw reports surface this morning that a deal has been finalized for them to lease the Coliseum again uh, for this upcoming season and an option for the next one if there's a delay in their Vegas stadium. Tell us about uh, where that stands. Hey, well, nothing's final till it's final. It does have to be voted on by both the city and the county and the Joint Powers Authority. But yes, the long goodbye of the Raiders has just gotten longer. Uh, we are excited that the Raider Nation, who is the most loyal fan base in the world, is probably going to get at least one more, possibly two more years of their team playing in Oakland. I'm very excited about this, but I do want to be clear, we have not dropped our right to sue them and the NFL for wrongfully leaving our city. Will that decision depend at all on what happens here if they decide to renew this lease? Or no, is it a completely separate, separate thing? Separate, separate. Okay, against the team and the NFL, that is still possibly going to continue, yes. or likely, yes, from what I'm that hearing. that is still moving forward. Um, that was something that the Raiders had asked us to drop as part of this negotiation um, that was not on the table. What are the terms lease or the I should say the lease's terms? Again, nothing is public. It hasn't been voted on, so you're likely to see those terms coming up. But what I can say is I think a lot of people don't realize that for years the city of Oakland and Alameda County have subsidized the Raiders every time they've played. And you better believe that this time that will not be the case. It must be an odd situation. I mean, I mean, someone who has lived basically her whole life in Oakland and has seen the Raiders come and go. Twice. Twice. <laughs> <laughs> um, and now this, this deal is on the table that may allow them to stay a year, possibly two years, but also the city is still in the process of suing the team. I mean, where are you emotionally yeah. with the team right now? Listen, I love the players. I love the fans. I love the game. I love the brand. I mean, I'm born and raised in Oakland. I've grown up with this team. But that's different from the ownership and the NFL. And I think there are a lot of things that have been pissing people off about the NFL as late. Uh, this is one of them. And I think that their loyalty to their cities and their fans leaves much to be desired. Yeah, we get it. All right, so very mixed feelings. We are going to talk about the A's a little bit later on. Yes. I don't want to let people think that we're no, escaping the we're A's. Totally we're totally going to talk about the A's. About the A's. Yeah. Um, but of course, you know, you having grown up in Oakland, a product of Oakland Public Schools, we know you care a lot about education, really making that a centerpiece of, of everything that you work for. Uh, the teacher strike is over. I think everyone is happy oh, about that, goodness. right? Yeah, there's uh, only so much Fortnite my son can play in a week. <laughs> I hear you on that, for sure. Um, but now the district had to vote for the $22 million in cuts to balance their budget. What can be done? What are you going to do to ensure the quality of education, um, given those cuts, and now that the teachers are back in the classroom, how to retain them? Yeah, no, the teacher's strike is not a joking ma mm -hmm. matter. Um, you know, I am a graduate, I'm a parent, and I am a fervent believer in the power of public education. And I think that to see the level of support that poured out for our teachers was really inspiring. But the pain is not over. It is taking us a long time to get into this financial condition, and it will take us some time to get out. Now, it is true that one of the things that I personally have done, and I actually called into the negotiating table and shared this with the teacher while, teachers while they were in negotiations, is to participate in trying to keep the restorative justice programs whole in our schools. It's a very important philosophy. It's been very powerful, and it's a student-led movement. Right now, they're looking at around a $1.8 million a year in cuts to this critical program. I have pledged that, at least in my proposed budget, I'll, I will put between $600,000 to $1 million, and I'm going to be calling on the county uh, philanthropy to match that so that we can make sure that we don't lose our Oh, that's good to hear. The city programs. will step in to help meet that part of the budget. Yeah. All right. But Mary, there structurally seems to be an issue, perhaps not even on the local level, perhaps at a different higher level about how this how schools are funded. I mean, mm -hmm. we got through it this time, but obviously some hard cuts are going to have to be made. What are you looking down the road to try and make it so that this 
this kind of equation that right. you have to calculate is going to work out. Well, we have to re-examine Prop 13. That's all there is. Well, in 2020, <laughs> 2020 right? 2020, we, will get to we have an opportunity to say we're not going to change how we tax residential property. Your, your grandma, like your family, will be fine. But we, knew, we need to reassess how commercially and, and corporate-owned land is treated under our tax code. That is the thing that has really denigrated our ability to fund public education at appropriate levels. That's a fight that we're going to be fighting. Um, and it's similar to there's a little bit of a court fight going on around the two-thirds requirement. And that actually has a very specific impact on Oakland because overwhelmingly voters voted for something called Measure A, which You get the majority, a, right? Wait, 62.5%, yeah. yeah. that's a good majority. Yeah. Um, to increase preschool quality and access and college readiness. We're going to talk a little bit later about just how that investment pays off so much. And the courts are now saying that maybe those types of, of measures only need a majority. And so that's another fight that I think we should be fighting. I believe that government services, when you demonstrate that they pay off, are worth investing in, and the majority of voters should have the power to determine that. One of the issues that has come up during the teacher strike was the fact that so many teachers can't afford to live in Oakland, or if they do, they have absolutely no chance of owning a place in Oakland. I have a feeling we're going to have to talk about this after the break as well, but just quickly before we get into a larger discussion housing is one of the biggest issues that it's you face every issues. mayor in the bay area faces that what's happening right now that's on your plate that is immediate well um, oakland has been doing a lot to try and protect people where they are we've strengthened our renter protections we have um, created financial assistance for people that are facing displacement and it's had a huge impact keep Oakland housed in the first six months kept more than 500 families from losing their housing. But we have to not only protect our tenants, we have to build more. We have a shortage of housing in the Bay Area. And one thing that we're really seeing in Oakland is we need to restore more funding sources for that protected, subsidized, affordable housing. Uh, we lost that when redevelopment was eliminated. We're really paying the price for that. But I'll tell you, Oakland is doing its fair share of building new housing. We have 9,300 units of housing mm -hmm. under construction right now. It's literally like 10 times what we've produced. I know you're years. very proud of that, but you've also been vocal on some other cities, maybe not doing its part quite so much to add to the housing stock, right? Is it a Bay Area-wide problem and solution that we're working on together here? Absolutely. When you look at the um, wonderful economic engine of the Bay Area, we've been adding jobs, but we haven't been ha adding the housing to house those workers. So many of our low-wage workers have been pushed out to the exurbs, becoming super commuters. We see them on our freeways every morning, and they're exhausted um, as they try and make ends meet and support their families. Something has got to give CASA is an, a proposal that came out of a year and a half process from MTC and ABAG. You're going to see a lot of legislation at the state level. And Some CASA basically it, means that you have regional leaders working together in the yeah. Bay Area. Mm -hmm. so yeah, that you're to not, add housing stock, right? Yeah. Yeah. So some of these proposals, even though they're at the state legislature, will apply to just the Bay Area because we have a specific crisis. We are back with Mary Libby Schaff. We're giving her an impossible task to go through these next <laughs> topics in a minute or less. It's like a lightning round. So we're going to start with one of the top issues that people have told you they're interested in, and that is trying to solve the problem of homelessness. You've brought in these tough sheds. These are emergency measures. They're basically mm -hmm. the kind of sheds that you would see like a Home Depot outside. They've been converted into temporary living structures. How will you know if that program is successful? Well, I can tell you we already do know it's successful. In its first year, we found that 70 percent of the people who exited those tough shed cabin communities moved into permanent or transitional housing. 70%. That is a great number. Obviously, people are not required to stay there, so it shows that people do want to heal, get their income back, get into permanent housing, and that this is a great stepping stone to do just that. Are other communities asking you about this? Right. They are. They are. We actually um, have been asked to write up um, a, a playbook on how to stand them up. Uh, we've 
we've gotten some funding from Citibank to do that. And we already know of one uh, in Alameda County outside of Oakland that's in the works right now. So, yeah. All right. You got some innovative partnerships with like Kaiser and big companies Absolutely. too, right? Okay. We got to talk about the A's. Everybody is asking us, hey, uh, pretty soon that's going to be the only professional team we have left in this town. So how is that ballpark coming along in terms of the plans? And uh, some people have been talking about the environmental site having some issues with cleanup or whether that gondola plan is really going to work to take people from BART to the Howard Terminal. Um, where do you see things right now? Listen, from my perspective, everything is going very well. Um, it's a complicated project. It's on the waterfront. So, of course, there are going to be environmental concerns. Those are all important. They have to be surfaced and they have to be addressed. Yeah. But the A's have made every indication that they take all these concerns seriously. I mean, just the environmental commitments that they made as part of state legislation that passed last year to give some certainty around the CEQA process uh, was phenomenal. So they have been a great community partner. Um, from my perspective, the land deal, which is the next step to actually have the term sheet for a lease and or purchase at Howard Terminal, mm -hmm. that's all proceeding on schedule in a way that I feel very confident about. Okay. We don't have a lot of time left, but I do <laughs> want to talk to you about scholarships and kids who are in Oakland Public Schools getting into higher ed. You're going to be talking about this soon, this yeah. week? March 14th, we're having our community report out on the Oakland Promise. Uh, we're celebrating our third anniversary. We just got our first independent evaluation results, and they were Phenomenal. And for people who don't know, can you just quickly explain Oakland Promise? It's a college to career initiative. It's everything from giving newborn babies college savings accounts and financial coaching for their parents all the way to multi-year scholarships and mentors for kids that are in college. We right now have just under 1,100 Oakland Promise scholars in college with mentors. I just ran into a mentor that works in this station. Is that right? That's, That's right. Fantastic. So the best mentor. <laughs> um, Clearly. But it's, it's other supports all along the way, one of which is helping kids fill out their financial aid for college. And I've got to make a really important announcement. Sure. The deadline for the FAFSA completion, that's your financial aid from the state and federal government, the deadline was Saturday. Mm -hmm. So many kids rely on school resources to complete those papers. And they weren't there. And they weren't there. And so I want everyone to know that our assembly member, Rob Bonta, is going to be bringing a bill to try and get a one-week extension. So if you are, an, especially an Oakland high school senior, still fill out that form. We are trying to get that extension. Don't give up. Fill out that form. Do not walk away from free money. It's for four-year college, for community college, whatever you want to do after high school, we want you to do it. And the Oakland Promise is working all those supports in just our first year. Look, and you listen saw to her. <laughs> our 14% increase in African Americans enrolling in a four-year college. That's great. That is amazing. Wow. Without FAFSA, I would not have gone to college. So mm -hmm. please listen to mm -hmm. the mayor. She knows of what oh, she yeah. speaks. And she sent the message also with Steph Curry too last week. That's they did right. a video together. So one of the perks of the job, right? Yes. yes. Well, great. Thank you so much for making the time and joining us today, Mary Libby oh, Schaff. Thank you for having me. Come back anytime. All right.